how many five letter words can you find where together they don't have any letters repeated. So for example, you might have a squiz at a panel. Squiz and panel both have five unique letters each with no letters in common between the two words. Or if that panel was a rom. Now we're up to three words. Could you do better? Oh. Don't put that chunk in the mixer. It'll be salty. Yeah. You don't have to make a story. That's optional. I got a little obsessed with this. And the question is, could you find four or maybe five? And all started because someone said a problem into the podcast I do called a problem squared. Actually, can we get the logo? Excellent. So I do that with Beck Hill. Some of you may know Beck Hill. Actually, can we get a photo of Beck in? Can we? Oh, excellent. Right. So uh, if you watch TV in the UK, you might have seen Beck. She's got a children's TV show called Make Away Take Away. So actually, we can get that, get that photo out. Perfect. Excellent. So we were sent a problem in by someone named Daniel who said pretty much this, although they framed it in terms of Wordle. They said, how many guesses can you have in Wordle before you have to repeat letters? And I should make it very clear, this is not gonna help you with Wordle. This is not a video about Wordle strategy. Check out 3Blue, One Brown's video for that. This was a Wordle inspired question. And I got pretty obsessed. This feels like it could plausibly be done. There are 26 different letters in the standard English alphabet, and we only need, well, five words with five letters each. 25, we'll have one spare. And there are five vowels, so if we're frugal with vowels and each word just has one, that should all work. And I was like, okay, I think we can do this. And while a lot of people would approach a word puzzle by thinking about words, trying to fit some together, I thought, well, hang on. What if we just check all the words? And by all the words, I mean all the words. Well, not actually all the words. If by word, you just mean a five character string of letters because there are over 11 million sets of five letters making up a word, most of them entirely nonsensical and actually a lot of them having duplicate letters. If we only have the ones with five unique letters, we're down to just over seven million. And most of them don't make any sense whatsoever. And there's no nice simple way of working out which sets of five letters are a real English word versus a made up word. And this you just download a giant list of all the words, which is what I did. And I already had a list of 370,105 different words. That's all of them. Well, the meaningful ones at least. I had that from the typewriter video where I want to calculate which words your finger would travel the greatest distance when typing them on a typewriter. A lot of fun. So I took the same list, I removed all the words which didn't have five letters, which whittled us down to just 15,920 words. And some of those had repeat letters. We don't need those. Once they're gone, we've only got 10,175 left. And some of those are anagrams. We don't have to check rearrangements of the same letters if we're just looking for unique sets of five letters. And if you remove all the anagrams, there are a mere 5,977 real meaningful words which have five letters that are all different and will removed anagram duplicates. Now, we just gotta check combinations of them. And how many can there be? A lot, there are a lot of combinations. If you've got 5,977 words and you need to pick five at a time, 5,977, choose five is over 63 quadrillion. It's a big old number. And if we wanna check all of them to see if they have 25 distinct letters, well, let's say, hypothetically, we've got a computer that can check a million every second. That's still gonna take over 2,000 years and I haven't got that kind of time. So we've got two options. We can either get a more powerful computer or we can be a bit more clever with how we're checking them. I went for option B, be a bit more clever. And this is always the problem when you're doing some kind of exhaustive search or check involving computers. You've gotta be smart at reducing the number of combinations to check as well as being clever with the amount of computing power you have available until the two meet in the middle and then you can do it. And this was the issue in the Second World War when they were trying to crack the Enigma code. Alan Turing was both doing very clever maths to reduce the combinations you had to check as well as increasing the power of this new thing they just invented called the computer. So I really only had a laptop that I was prepared to run this on. I could have, you know, got 
cloud server time or more powerful computers or worked out so I could run it on more than one computer. But I'm like, no, 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 I wanna run something on an old laptop so I can just leave it going. I need to get the combinations down so I can achieve that within my lifetime. I decided to go for aggressive pruning, by which I mean cutting off the branching options as soon as possible. So instead of going all the way to the end of looking at every single possible combination of five words, any combination of five, you can imagine it as starting with just a pair of two words. And then you look at all the ways to add three more. So I checked every single pair of words to see if they had 10 unique letters. And if they didn't, I could ignore any other sets that have those two words in them. And pairs, there are way fewer. Specifically, 3,213,696 pairs of words which each had 10 unique letters. At this point, I didn't remove the kind of two-word anagram equivalent. I kept all of those in. And now all I had to do was take every pair of words that had 10 unique letters, compare it to every other pair of words that has 10 unique letters, see if between them they've got 20 unique letters, and if they do, See if I can find another word to give us five more. Now, I could have been more clever because there are still loads of duplicates in the way I was doing it. And I could have kept trying to hone the code, make it more efficient. But at this point, I'm like, look, I've just got to set the code running and move on to other projects. So I did, I just set the code going. It ran for over a month. Sat there, churning away, it's like, I was about to say, it's like a less useful version of Bitcoin, but you be the judge. It sat there, churned away, and then one day, it finished. And it came back with some interesting results. If you're curious how the code actually worked, I'll put it all on GitHub, you can have a look. It could be way better. Don't send me ways I could have improved it. I know I could have improved it. The point is, I knew I could just wait for it to finish. And here's what it found. My code had found 538 sets of five words that between them had 25 unique letters. I was super impressed. And then I realized 470 of them, we're talking 87.3% of all successful sets of five words had one word in common. They all contained this word. F-L-D-X-T, pronounced fluid extract, apparently, and it seems my original list of words claimed that was a word. I thought people might be a bit upset. In fact, when I mentioned this in the podcast, uh, Beck, my co-host, was very upset. Actually, can we get that photo of Beck when I told her fluid extract is a... Oh, there it is, right, yeah, she looked, she was so angry, she put in a cardigan, right? So, okay, we can take that out now. There we go, thank you. Right, so Beck, Beck was unimpressed, and I figured a lot of other people would be as well. The problem, is I had initially cast my word net very wide. And that list of words I used is very, very generous with its definition of what a word is. It basically defines a word as any string of characters that someone's likely to use or type at some point. I'll link to the database below if you wanna check it out. It's useful for things like uh, filling, like auto filling in, auto completing things when people are typing them. And what we actually call a word is a stricter definition, whereas this is just strings of letters people might use. And if you Google fluid extract, F-L-D-X-T, there's over 7,000, or at least there were over 7,000 responses when I did this. And I thought, you know what? I could use Google searches as a way to work out which are the most like a word. So I wrote a little cheeky script that would take every single word from all the responses I had out of my original code, Google it, and then record how many responses popped up when you searched for that word. I could also use this Google search record the number of results technique to deal with the anagram problem because some of the solutions I had had words in them where I'd excluded an anagram that had the same letters and that might be a better word. So I also automatically Googled every single anagram of every word from every solution and then pick the one with the highest number of Google results to include that in the official charts. I then removed all the ones with fluid extract because apparently that's just a step too far. And of the remaining 68, I could then rank them by how much a word Google thought they were. 
And here it is. First word is Vibex. And you're already thinking, two vowels. Oh, that's a bold start. Followed by Glyph, there you are. No vowels, all averages out. Then Munts, Dwarf, and Jocks. And this was the top ranking one because Munts, which is a word about a type of metal, I think, that only had 740,000 results on a Google search, but that was the largest minimum value from all the results I got. But that did feel a little bit arbitrary. Instead of dwarf jocks, you actually could have had wax fjord. There you are, fjord, pretty funny word. Be pleased with that. And there were other options. So you could have XPWY, that's pronounced expressway. There you are, sure for expressway. Uh, HDQRS, headquarters. There's a lot of abbreviations. Vingutut, and then either Flack and Jumbo or Flock and Jumba. I, you can see how that works. In fact, I would almost consider those, that's the same solution, just with a slight tweak. In other words, people are gonna hate this. No one's gonna like Expressway, spelt E-X-P-W-Y. I need a way I can find which of my solutions are unambiguously valid solutions so no one can argue with me. And then I realized that the arbitrator of word truth was right in front of me the whole time. It's Wordle. It turns out in the original version of Wordle, so before the New York Times bought it and updated it, the original code just had the list of acceptable words baked in. Actually, there were two lists. One was all the answer words and the other one was all the acceptable guess words that you could use to get to the answers, but you combine them and you get the 12,000 972 acceptable words in a game of Wordle. So I realized this was the definitive list of what is a word that I needed the whole time. So I took all 538 of the results I got. I compared each one to the official Wordle word list to see how many of the five words from each one matched. Five of my solutions had zero words in common with the Wordle list. Uh, and here they are, these are the absolute worst. There were then 85 that had a single word in common, 210 that had two words in common, 193 had three words in common, 44 had four words in common, but when it came to five words in common, a complete match, all five words validated by the almighty Wordle, there was one, one single solution five Wordle words that use 25 unique characters. And they are Fjord, good old Fjord, thank goodness. Gux, now Gux as in, ah, oh, there's some guck on this. Oh, there's some guck on that. Wait, these are different Gux. Gux. Nymph, uh, from both biology and Greek mythology. You've also got Vibex, yeah, Vibex is back. Something to do with veins, real word, according to Wordle and biologists. And finally, waltz. And what a fantastic waltz we have indeed been on. Uh, the missing letter, Q. There you are. All 25 letters, Q left over. So there you are. That is the only set of five Wordle words that contain 25 unique letters. I feel like we've all achieved something here today. Future Matt here. So the podcast episode went out yesterday and within 24 hours, someone says they've written code which will do what took my computer a month in under a day. So let's check it out. Uh, they put it on GitLab. I will link to this below if you want to have a look at it. They've got all the files and a bit of a description down here, um, including, and this is, I think, one of the greatest disses you're ever going to see on GitLab. According to Parker, executing Parker's algorithm on a laptop took about a month. This appeared to the author as optimizable. In other words, Matt's an idiot. I can do a lot better. So I've already downloaded all of their code. Let's go find that. And how did they do it? Well, in their tweet here, Benjamin Pasen, I think that's correct. Um, they said they did 22 minutes. Oh my goodness. Using graph theory. 
So what they actually did was make a network of every five letter word with five unique letters linked together the ones that have no letters in common and look for complete subgraphs. So five of them that link to all of the four other ones in that subgraph. And if you have a look at the code that I've loaded up here, there's two files, one that generates the graph and then another one that then searches for these subgraphs. So you know what, I'm gonna run it and we'll see, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna import time and then I'm going to uh, print the time so we can see how long this actually takes. So I've put, I've put uh, printing what the current time is at the top and then uh, people are gonna yell at me. I know you're not supposed to time code this way. Uh, I'm gonna whack that at the bottom. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do, oh, here we go. So there they've specified the file. I'm gonna put in the complete path. I don't think it's a security risk to show that let's uh you know i'm going to clear that message and try again oh it's off and racing it's building neighborhoods aren't we all aren't we all done it's writing to the output and it's finished Let's see how long it took. Don't judge me, I pasted the times into Excel, 22 and a half seconds, okay. So that's our running time so far. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the output from that. We're gonna switch over to the actual file that does the business. I'm gonna add in again, I'm gonna import time because I wanna make sure that this is as fast as everyone's claiming it's gonna be. There we are, that goes top and bottom, okay. So, uh, here we go. Oh, it's loading the graph. It, oh, <laughs> this will take long. You know what? I'm gonna head out. I'll come back later and we'll see how long this took. Okay, so I'm back. I uh, Don't worry, I just went to the hotel bar. I'm on the road at the moment and it's evening time here. Don't be fooled by how sunny it is. And it's done. 800 and 31 that's more hang on let's open them up and have a look okay it's eight amount as a um csv file that i've opened here in excel looks like it's concatenated them all together but if you pick on them they're actually they're separated by tabs um and they're all here and it occurs to me the reason why there are more because i only had like 528 i think uh the reason there's more is they've included all the anagrams so I stripped out anagrams the way they've done it. They must have put anagrams in. And the fact that it's roughly one and a half times the size matches up with the average number of anagrams I had before. So let's have a look at how long that took. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, let's, let's add them all up for completeness sake. And there we go. 900 seconds. Oh, that's going to be a really, really neat number of minutes. Oh my goodness. 15 minutes on the nose to find 831. So actually, I think that ratio is about right. They found 831. I found 538. And so that, uh, let's have a look. It's going to be about 40 something percent extra, 54%. Okay, I reckon that's just the anagrams. I'll double check that later to make sure um, they didn't find any that I didn't because I was exhaustive. Um, so there you go. Um, well done, Benjamin. You were able to do what took me 32 days of computing time in 15 minutes. That's less than 1 30th of a day. I'm glad I interrupted my trip for this. Back to you, past Matt. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll link to the word list as well as my code below. I know it's terrible code. You don't have to tell me. And finally, a huge thanks to everyone who listens to A Problem Squared and my co-host, Beck Hill. Can we get that picture of Beck? Beck? Oh, we can. There we go. So we, actually, can we get a different one? She's, um, I know we had a Cardi for Angry Beck, but she's always wearing the same thing. And so just while we're waiting for the people to fire, they found it. There it is. Wow. Actually, can we get that but looking uh, more pensive? Take the one out for a pensive one. So if you go to a problem squared dot, that was quick, um, dot com, you can, now I go back to the happy one. Let's have the happy one again. Uh, you can uh, pose problems for the podcast. Where, that's good. Where we are, but it's, not, it's still in the different, different outfit. Good, good. We have a bigger library of Beck photos than I thought. So you can pose problems that we will try to answer or solutions to things we'll try to answer. But if you enjoy listening to podcasts, 
please do check out A Problem Squared with me and my co-host, Beck Hill. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs>